What can we do about federal officials who violate the Constitution? Throw the bums out in the next election. Have you ever campaigned against an incumbent elected official? Yes, in the last two elections. Were you successful? No, not even close. The incumbent had too much money. Did you try to get the challenger to raise constitutional issues? Yes, but he wouldn't do it. He said voters wouldn't understand or vote for the Constitution. I don't think he understood, either. Did anyone raise constitutional issues in those elections? Yes, the libertarians did, but they don't have much money or public support. So if the people don't respond to constitutional arguments in election campaigns, what else can we do? Sue the bastards. Have you been personally injured by federal officials violating the Constitution? No. I would do it to prevent that happening to other people. Federal courts won't let you do that. They have a doctrine on standing by which they refuse to hear cases from people who have not been personally injured or expect to be. The case that did that was frothing and v. Mellon in 1923. You mean before then people could sue to protect others before being injured themselves? Yes. But if you did, that now the case would be thrown out. So I would need to find someone who had been injured and get him to sue? Perhaps, and sometimes that works. But it is very expensive, and most victims are not very sympathetic. The feds go after easy targets first, until they get a precedent that entrenches the violation. After that it becomes almost hopeless. How much might it cost? It will likely take at least $100,000 to take a case to the U.S. Supreme Court and could take one million. Wow. That's a lot of money to have to raise. It is also not likely to succeed unless it can make it to the U.S. Supreme Court and they only take about 80 of the 8,000 cases submitted to them each year. It can take 10 years to make it up to them. How many cases would we have to pursue to get back to the Constitution as it was originally meant? Congress passes about 20,000 justiciable provisions each year that should be challenged. So even if every suit was ultimately successful, we are looking at as much as $20 billion. It would also take at least 100 times as many courts as there are to hear all the cases doing nothing else. And that doesn't do anything about all the past unconstitutional legislation or wrong court precedents. Gee. I didn't realize. And so what else might we do? Get our state legislature to nullify the usurpations? What do you think nullification is? A state legislature passing something to make the federal usurpation illegal. That won't work. State legislatures don't have a veto over what federal officials do. Can't they just pass a law making it a crime for federal agents to violate the Constitution? How do you think that would work? If a federal agent tried to do something like collect on that individual mandate in the Health Care Act, the state would arrest him and throw him in jail. He wouldn't see the inside of a jail. The federal government would remove the case to federal court, where it would be dismissed, probably within hours. How does that work? All any party has to do to remove a case from state court to federal court is to file a one-page notice of removal with each court that has the effect of enjoining the state court from doing anything further on it unless or until the federal court remands it back to the state court. Wow. You don't have to get permission to remove it. Just file a paper. You said the case would be dismissed? Yes, if it was for something the federal agent was doing in connection with his work. It wouldn't immunize him from, say, murdering his wife while he was at home and not on duty. But if he did it while on duty, he might have the case dismissed, which would end it, unless it was overturned on appeal, which isn't likely to happen. You've got to be shitting me. How long have feds been able to get away with murder? Removal jurisdiction goes back to an act of Congress passed in 1812. It wasn't used abusively for a long time, but now it is. Well, at least if federal agents were arrested, it might send a message. Sure, but the federal agents would send a message back by arresting and prosecuting the state agent for the federal felony or impeding a federal agent. Wouldn't a state statute at least give the state attorney general standing to sue in federal court? No. Nothing the state can do can give it standing. That was tried in the recent case of Virginia v. Sabay Bailius. 
part of the case survived the first round, but that argument was thrown out. Passing the state act was a waste of time. So nullification can work? Nullification can work if it is done right, but suing and arresting federal agents won't work. What is needed is statewide non-cooperation. State officials and citizens can't directly stop federal agents, but they can refuse to help them in any way, and for those few things for which the Fed still need some assistance, it may make it difficult enough that they give up trying. So what is nullification? Nullification is passive resistance that causes officials to abandon trying to do something. How can we get everyone in the state to do that? First, we need an accepted way to decide which federal actions are unconstitutional. The traditional way to do that is to have a grand jury hear complaints and issue a finding. Then what? Then we need a state law that requires state employees and contractors to refuse to cooperate with federal agents if they try to perform that unconstitutional action. It could fire them or suspend their pay if they do cooperate. It should also ask ordinary citizens to refuse to cooperate, especially if they sit on a jury. Okay, but what happens if state employees, contractors, or citizens resist and get prosecuted for it? The state can't represent them in court. That comes from a companion 1923 case, Massachusetts v. Mellon, that held a state has no standing to protect the rights of its citizens in federal court but it can pay for private attorneys to represent them, and it can support their costs during the ordeal, so they and their families don't lose too much. So the state would need to set up a kind of civil defense fund. That should make the lawyers happy. Yes, but it begins with setting up that statewide grand jury. Most states only have local grand juries, and they are usually under the thumb of public prosecutors. Wouldn't that state grand jury just be stacked the way local grand juries are today? The way to avoid that is to have the members selected at random from a large pool of nominees designated by local grand juries in each county, and excluding lawyers and public employees and pensioners who might be subjected to pressure or be biased in favor of government. Wouldn't it be better to just have the state legislature issue findings that federal actions are unconstitutional? For 20,000 new unconstitutional federal legislative provisions every year, not to mention the tens of thousands of usurpations by judges and administrators, they couldn't begin to handle the load and wouldn't be able to get anything else done. Wow. Where can I go to learn more about this? Do a web search on Federal Action Review Commission, surrounded by quotes.